Welcome to the ScholarPack Autumn Census 2020 video. In this video, we're going to look at how to complete the Autumn Census within ScholarPack. The day of the Autumn Census is Thursday the 1st of October 2020. The deadline is Wednesday the 28th of October 2020. However, your local authority may have a shorter deadline. These are the changes introduced for the 2020 to 2021 school census. Termly attendance. Summer term attendance will not be collected. However, the Department of Education will still require pupil no longer on roll records for all pupils with a date of birth between the 1st of September 2003 and the 31st of August 2015, aged between 4 and 15 as of the 31st of August 2019, with a leaving date between the 1st of January 2020 and the 31st of July 2020, and are not orders. Exclusion collection period. Due to the absence of the summer census collection, the department have decided to recollect any exclusion with a start date in the full 2019 to 2020 academic year, Free school meal eligibility period. Due to the absence of a summer census collection, the department have decided to amend the end date range for the autumn 2020 census to collect a free school meal eligibility date that is on or after the 17th of January 2020 and up to and including the autumn census day of the 1st of October 2020. Exclusion reasons. From autumn 2020, you may add up to three reasons per exclusion. The autumn school census looks at all pupils on school register on census day, pupils with exclusions in the academic year 2019, and pupils who attended school in the previous summer term. It is required for the following settings. Registered independent schools, alternative provisions and early year settings, private, voluntary and independent, do not participate in the school census. The data collected via the Autumn 2020 school census will be used in the calculation of the school's block of dedicated schools grant and also the Universal Infant Free School Meals funding. Therefore, it is vitally important that the census data for your schools are submitted promptly and accurately. Post-16 data collected via the Autumn School Census will be used by the Education and Skills Funding Agency to calculate post-16 funding allocations for schools with sick forms. As such, data accuracy is highly important. Although not used centrally by the Department for Funding Allocations, funded hours from the Autumn and Summer Census may be used locally by local authorities for funding early education. It is therefore important to check that all pupils who are in attendance at your school on the 1st of October 2020 are showing on your current role in ScholarPack. Local authority schools will either submit data directly to the DfE via Collect or their local authority will collect and return data on their behalf. Academies, CTCs and non-maintained special schools submit their data directly to the DfE. To access the census, click on Admin and then Census. Here we can see each census for this academic year. Here we have the Autumn Census, the Census Date and the status within the system. Click Autumn 2020 under the Run Census column. Within this area, you have two columns. The left column is where we collect data. The right column is where we check our data, check for any errors or queries, run the census and re-download the files. First, you have our ScholarPack documentation. Here, you'll be able to access the written guide to the census. You also have the official DfE documentation and a link to contact the DfE. Here, we have any notes regarding the census. We have a note regarding attendance and exclusions. 
Then we have the specific data for this census. Here it is looking at school lunch taken for children in reception, year one and year two on census day. To edit this information, click the school lunch taken button under the view slash edit column. This will open a new tab and it will show you each child in reception, year one, year two, their morning attendance mark for the census day, a meal choice if available in Scholarpack if you use our meals module, and a school lunch taken tick box. In here, we can select each child that have had a school dinner on that day. We can do this by ticking the box in the school lunch taken column. At the bottom of the screen, once you've done this, click the Save button. We also have the option to pre-populate dinners based on their attendance mark. By clicking pre-populate, it will update this for each child marked as present or late with an L code for that day. Click OK to confirm and you'll see each child with a present mark or L mark will have their box ticked. Once finished, click Save. The information under the census standard data will be collected from your Scholarpack database. The first option is School. By clicking School, this will take you to your school table. You can then click Edit. Here you'll be able to change your school's phase, school type, highest and lowest year groups, entry gender and contact information. Anything you do change, please click Update. The next option is free school meals eligibility. Here we can check our children with free school meals. Set your group of children from here, whether you want to include former students or not, and whether you want to see all students or only those with current or previous free school meal periods. Click choose, and here we can see every single child with free school meals. We can find them with the drop down box here by searching their name or UPN number or scroll down to find them. For Margaret, we can see her start date is the 12th of the 9th, 2017, with no end date. She's also claiming free school meals. To edit this, click the edit button. We can make changes to their start date, end date, whether they're claiming, and eligibility for temporary free school meals. To save this, click Update. The next option is Language. This will take you to the Group Up data. First, select the Year Group and Form Group you wish to look at, and then the attribute has been set to First Language. Here we can see all of our children and their present value for First Language. First, select the language you wish to set them to from the drop down box. Select the children you wish to change. Or click the check all box to check all children. And at the bottom of the page, click the update button. Click OK to confirm. And you'll now see the selected children have been set to the chosen value. The group up data will be used multiple times throughout the census. This includes service children. Again, select a value from the drop down box. Select the children you wish to set this to. And at the bottom, click update. The next option is funded hours. This will take you back to the group up data, but we will be in a different configuration. Here we can see all of the funded hours set for each child. To make a change, type in the value under the value column, select that child and click update at the bottom of the screen. To bulk fill this value, enter a value into fill all values with, click the fill button, and you'll see all of the values have now been changed. Select the children you wish to set this value to, 
and then click update at the bottom of the screen. This is also extended to the extended childcare hours, 30 hour code, and hours at setting. For top up funding, it also takes you to the group up data in a different configuration. Here we can set true or false for our children and click update at the bottom of the screen to update them. For post looked after arrangements, you will need to navigate to the child's profile. We can do this by selecting a child from the drop down box in the top right hand corner. Here we can type in their name or search them from the list. From their profile, go to the extended tab and scroll down to support information. You'll see the final option is for post looked after arrangements. Select your value and then click save. Enrollment status, entry date, part time, national curriculum year, type of class will all take you to the group up data. SEM provision will take you to the SEM report. Select your group and form groups and then click choose. Here we'll be able to see each child with an SEM record. We'll be able to see their SEM provisions, their codes, and their primary and secondary types. If you wish to make a change to an SEN record, navigate to the child's profile, select the support tab, and click the white cog next to SEN. To edit an existing need, click the edit button, or to add a new need, click the add new button. Here, we'll be able to change things like their start dates, their end dates, their broad area of needs, and also we'll be able to add in primary and secondary needs. We can do this by clicking Add New SEN Need, setting the type, the need itself, the start date, and an end date. We can leave the end date blank if needed. Once you've made any changes, please click Save. Disability Access Fund will also take you to the group up data. For exclusions, this will take you to the exclusions report. Here we can select the date range we wish to look between, select which types of exclusions you wish to have a look at, and then click Choose. Here we'll be able to see all exclusions logged between these dates. To log an exclusion, navigate to the child's profile. Select the Conduct tab. And on the left hand side, select Exclusions. To add an exclusion, click Add and proceed to fill out the form. This would include the category, up to three reasons, a start date, session start, exclusion end date, how many sessions were they excluded, review dates, was an SDN expert needed, if there are any appeals, the date of the appeal, the result of the appeal, the date reinstated, and any notes to accompany the exclusion. Once you've entered this information, click Submit. Please note the e-code will need to be entered within the register for these children. The final option is Address. This will take you to the Addresses report. Set your group and form group and click Choose. This will then show you the address for each child. A quick way to identify if any children have any missing addresses is to reorganize the address column. 
you can do this by clicking on it. Here we can see we have three children without an address. To add an address, navigate to the child's profile. And on the first page of their profile, navigate down to address. Click the white cog and under current address, click add. Here you will be able to enter a postcode, select the address from the drop down box, and then click save. Once you've collected all of your data, it's now time to calculate your census to identify any errors and queries you may have. You can do this by clicking the Calculate button. Please note this may take a while depending on how many errors and queries you have. Here we'll be able to see a summary for your school, how many children are on roll, how many children not on roll, and how many errors and queries you have. Here we'll be able to see each error, the error number, for which child, and the reason for the error. If you click on the error, it will show you where to rectify that error. We also have an error details button. This will take you to our documentation for that particular error code. So here we had error 1510. We can select the documentation article and here we can see how to rectify that issue. If you have rectified many of your errors and you wish to clear them from the list, click Recalculate Census in the top right hand corner. This will rerun your census to make sure that any errors or queries that have been rectified are cleared from the list. Some errors and queries will give you the option to fix the error. In this case, the UPN is invalid. If I click Fix Error, this will take me to the page to rectify that error, which in this case is the extended page of the child's profile. We can navigate down to the school information area. In this case, we can update their UPN and we can click Save at the bottom of the page. It's important to note that you can recalculate the census as many times as needed. You can also print this page off by clicking the Print button. To navigate back to the census page, click Return to Census page. Once you've rectified all of your errors and queries, it's now time to run your census summaries. First, you can run the official school summary. Here, you will have multiple tables showing you the information that will be submitted as part of your census. Here, we have table one for school characteristics, table two for children on roll by age and gender, table three for people on roll by national curriculum year, and so on. Here, you'll be able to print this table off and go through to check your numbers. We also have the option for the scholar pack summary. This is the same as the official school summary with the ability to expand each column. If I navigate to table five, you will see that I have two service children. If I wish to identify these children, for this table, I can click show data. And you'll now see the UPNs of the children in each column. If I wish to identify their names, I can click show such hide names. This way it's easier to identify each child in each of these columns. We also have the option to jump to each table from this drop down box. Set the table and it will take you down to that area. Once you are happy with your census and you want to download the file, click download census file. This will then download the file into your default download location. From there, you can then upload to the collect service or your local authority. You can re-download the census file as many times as needed. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it useful. If you require any further assistance, please contact your support team, or you can access our documentation page. This can be found by going to Home and then Documentation.